We start off this week's show by joining Jeff Johnston as he takes us along the Oregon coast in a place called Shore Acres. And as we can see, even on a not so perfect day, the Oregon coast has a lot to offer. Then, Michelle Fontaine shows us how she installed a new Global Link Bluetooth remote lock system on her Grand Design trailer, along with a single key lock system on all her storage compartments for a one key fits all solution. Later, on Paws on Board, Dr. Fitz explains what to do when your dog meets up with a skunk when you're out camping. We wrap up this episode with our RV experts, Mark and Don Polk, from RV Education 101, and learn how you can live comfortably on 30 amps in your RV. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. Today's RVing Today Quick Stop covers three fun locations on the Southern Oregon coast. Hi, I'm Jeff Johnston for RVing Today. We're here at beautiful Shore Acres State Park on the Oregon coast, just south of Coos Bay. This is arguably the most spectacular spot on the Oregon coast for watching the waves. Now that's a real popular thing here in Oregon, especially during bad weather. Now we're here today on a beautiful, nice weather day. It's also low tide. There's still some fun action going on out here, but it's nothing like when you're here for a storm. And over my left shoulder there, kind of off in the distance, you can see a, a sort of an observation point that has a little bit of a railing out there. Um, if you're standing by that railing on a really wet, stormy day, you're going to get wet from the ocean. It's possible we might ride here too, but uh, not today. In any case, Shore Acres State Park is a great place to visit or southwest of Coos Bay, Oregon. Park walking trails wind through majestic spruce and fir forests. Parking is abundant, but even the designated RV spot gets crowded on popular weekends. The park includes a botanical garden that was closed the day of our visit, but is well worth the exploration. Bay Point Landing Campground is a terrific lodging option in the Coos Bay area. We're right on the bay here in Coos Bay, Oregon, and uh, we have a modern luxury camping resort. So we've got 160 uh, luxury RV sites, full hookups on everything, uh, 30 amp, 50 amp cable, uh, great Wi-Fi. Um, besides that, we also run a camping resort. So we have four styles of cabins. Uh, we also have Airstream rentals. And so um, those are great to enjoy and, uh, and kind of camp in style, whether it's your first time or whether you're looking for a resort experience. Um, one of the great things about Bay Point Landing is amenities. Um, we provide uh, deliveries throughout the park, whether it's from our food service, firewood, bottles of wine, chocolate, uh, anything in our general stores. Uh, we also have a great indoor heated saltwater pool, uh, fitness centers, activities rooms, both for adults and kids. Uh, and we do have an event center, which is, uh, doubles as a dining room. For big groups, we also have a beautiful uh, pavilion that's great for events and we rent out privately. Um, there are some other outdoor amenities, uh, community fire pits, uh, horseshoes, bocce ball, um, and a nice playground for the kids too. Uh, we are open year round. Um, we actually do invite monthly stays October through June 1st. And uh, look forward to all our summer guests, our peak periods being June through um, basically September. And uh, we have a lot of folks coming out and enjoying the waters. And so, you know, we do have uh, motorhome uh, designated sites, waterfront. We also have back in sites, waterfront de uh, dedicated. And we've got a variety of sites. We've got some pull throughs for both styles, nice and convenient and sites up to about 75 feet. Absolutely, we are www.baypointlanding.com. Um, we should be easy to find and we're just nestled right uh, on the Cape Arago Highway, um, right by the state parks and uh, all the attractions of Coos Bay, North Bend and, uh, and the or Southern Oregon coast. While you're out on your central to Southern Oregon coast adventure, if you feel like eating something a little bit different, stop in here at the Blue Heron in beautiful downtown Coos Bay. Blue Heron is an authentic German restaurant. We don't have very many of those. This is what they call the Oktoberfest. Holy cow, it's got 
schnitzel, it's got sauerbraten, it's got knockwurst, and German potatoes, and red cabbage, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a spectacular array. And I really hope that I'm hungry, because it's a big meal. Their menu includes just about anything German that you might like to have. Stop in, give them a shot. It's worth the stop. The Blue Heron Restaurant, Bay Point Landing, and Shore Acres State Park are just three of the great places you can visit during your Oregon Coast adventure. Learn more by visiting our website at rvingtoday.tv. When Bedford launched Aquachem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax. Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Now, let's join Michelle as she shows us how easy it was to install her new Global Link lock system. This keyless entry lock is easy to install, and it can be opened and locked three different ways. The standard two-lock key entry, your personal four-digit code, or using the Global Lock app, which I'll talk about a bit later. And now, let's install. Remove the existing lock. Simple Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, four screws. These are tighter. Still very doable if you don't have a drill. Pull this in, give it a little, and look at that. Insert the new lock into the same footprint. Add the plate on the end. There's a few things that have to line up behind here. First of all, this is down, okay? And see how this works right here? So by this being down, it goes over here into this slot. Make sure this lock thing is down so this is over here this way and it's gonna fit into that hole. That and then addition to this flat piece matching up with the round flat piece here and the plug being out of the way. Okay, finally got it. That was tricky. So again, just make sure this is down and it's all lined up and get those screws in there. Literally, this took me about 20 minutes to line it up just right. So have patience. This new plate is exactly the same as this plate, so I don't really need to change it, but this one's a little beat up. So we're gonna go ahead and put the new one on. It closes. Now we want to put the battery in so we can get the Global Link app working. Eh, eh, eh. Press and hold any key to wake up the keypad. I'm going to try to add my personal pin. Press and hold 90 for three seconds. Enter the factory default pin. Enter the new pin you want. And do it again. Yay! All right. 
Now I'm going to go finish setting up the app now that I did this part. I downloaded the Global Link Connect app, made sure my Bluetooth was on, and paired it. And saying add. All right, we've got the keyless entry lock installed. I've got the app downloaded. Now I want to show you. Let's say you're inside your RV. It's nighttime, you're settled in into your bed, you're reading Facebook, whatever, and you decide to go to sleep. And you think, oh, is the door locked? All you need to do is press on your Global Link app. It opens up. It shows you the status of your lock. Did you hear that? Now my door is locked and I can go to sleep. So this works within a short circumference of your RV too. So if you're outside at the picnic table, you want to unlock, the kids want to go in, or you're in your car or truck getting ready to leave your RV for a bit and you wonder, hmm, did I lock it? Easy peasy, just lock it. One of the most significant things about RV locks is that over 75% of them use the very same key. Chris Carpenter of Global Link expresses this very well. So Chris, take it away. Um, we always like to mention the, the most popular, the CH751 key. I would guess if you have that 751 key on your key ring, if you're sitting around the campground with 10 other guys having a cold drink, nine of them will have that 751 key on their ring as well. And that's mainly the, the cam locks, the little round silver locks. Um, and they're all keyed the same. Uh, we used to, I'm an older guy, as you can tell, but in the old days, we only kept beer and firewood in there. We didn't care. Now we have $1,000 batteries and $1,500 satellite dishes and $200 sewer hoses. It's a lot more important. So what we offer is an option to either take those cylinders, now on those 751 cam locks, you gotta replace the lock, but we're talking $15. You can replace the lock, and if you happen to have a global branded entry door lock with a G300 key code, we can key it to that G300 number as well. The whole idea is to get one key on your key ring that fits everything on your RV, the convenience is, is wild. One of the other issues we have when you have two doors, two entry doors, if you happen to have those, chances are they're not the key the same. As Chris mentioned earlier, over 75% of RVs use the CH751 lock. Usually it's a cam lock, the small silver lock on our cargo bays. Mayan used the CH751. So because I installed a keyless entry global branded lock on the door, I was able to get the matching keys for my cargo bays. So I have one key that opens everything. Earlier, I mentioned that I thought the door opened too hard and shut too hard. So I've asked my friend and colleague, Jason Chasco, to take a look. It wasn't the lock, it was the striker key. And Jason took on the challenge. What I'm gonna be doing here is I'm using a small center punch to actually put a dimple in there before I drill the hole so the drill doesn't drift and run out of the way we can get it in the center. Now I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to put a couple small pilot holes in there. So now I'm going to remove one screw at a time, put it in the new hole. I'm not going to tighten these down fully just yet until I have them both in line. It wasn't closing quite the way Michelle wanted to, so we need to braille or bring the plate a little farther outboard of it. So right here is a little bit of a lip from when they cut the hole. I'm just gonna take my moto tool here, my Dremel, and just take a little bit off of here to be able to pull it out. There isn't a lot of meat left because they got it close to the edge, but I think just by moving it about a sixteenth of an inch, we'll be able to get it. Not even a sixteenth of an inch. Mm -hmm. 
just to get a little bit more play coming out. So here we go, we'll try it again. Better. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Very nice. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River. Begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. Welcome to Rollin' On TV's Pause On Board. I'm Dr. Fitz. And this is Champ. Today we're addressing an issue that many RVers face. What to do if your dog encounters a skunk. Although we hope it'll never happen to us, dogs will generally get skunked at the most inconvenient times. Your dog may encounter a skunk in the evening time at home, as skunks tend to be most active at night. Campgrounds are also super common areas for skunk encounters, as they're usually near the skunk's home environment and provide an ample opportunity for an evening snack. The most common side effect of being sprayed by a skunk is, of course, the smell. But did you know that the spray can actually be dangerous to your pet? If your dog was sprayed in the face, it can lead to severe eye irritation and drooling due to the poor taste. You may see your pet's eyes become red and swollen, and they may vomit and drool due to the spray in their mouth. If this happens, you can rinse your pet's eyes with a saline eye wash if available, or clean room temperature tap water. Rinse out their mouth with water as well. If this does not provide relief, your pet should be taken to a veterinarian for assessment. If enough of the spray was ingested, it can sometimes lead to anemia or decreased red blood cells, as the spray can be toxic. This is uncommon, but if your pet is lethargic or weak with pale gums, get them to a veterinarian right away. <laughs> so what's the best way to rid your dog of the horrible skunky smell? Many of you have probably heard of using tomato juice, but this method is not very effective. You would need gallons of tomato juice, multiple baths. It would likely end up with a red dog in the end, probably like the champ here. So that's not working. An easier method is to use about a quart of hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup of baking soda, and a few tablespoons of a gentle dish soap. Make up the mixture as needed. It should not be stored for later use. Use the mixture to bathe your pet, but take care to avoid their eyes and mouth. You can bathe them with a pet shampoo afterwards to improve the smell even further. Just make sure that you dry your pet well and put them in a warm environment after bathing. The final consideration you should have if your pet encounters a skunk is rabies. In the US, skunks carry rabies. If your dog decides to challenge a skunk, it's possible that they could have been bitten. If so, your dog should be taken to a vet to have the wound cleaned and treated and to receive a rabies booster vaccine. Always make sure that your pet is up to date on their rabies vaccine prior to travel to reduce their risk of illness. Good job. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rollingontv.com. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Champ. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. What's that? Oh yeah, good boy. Yes, good job. Want more RVing today? then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, 
You'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. Today I want to discuss a topic I think is important for all RV owners. That topic is RV living on 30 amps. Typically RVs come equipped with either a 30 amp electrical system or a 50 amp electrical system. The majority of RVs are equipped with a 30 amp electrical system. Using the 30 amp electrical system in your RV is different than using a 200 amp electrical system in your house. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Before we get started, it's important to review some very basic electrical formulas. If you understand these formulas, you'll begin to understand why a circuit in your RV or at the campground is overloaded. Watts divided by volts equals amps. Amps times volts equals watts. Watts divided by amps equals volts. These simple formulas can be used to answer questions based on what information is available. If you have two pieces of information, you can solve any electrical equation dealing with your RV's electrical system. You already know the RV has a 120 volt electrical system and labels on appliances identify the wattage and or amperage of the appliance. An example would be attempting to use two 120 volt appliances at the same time that total 2000 watts. The formula is 2000 watts divided by 120 volts equals 16.7 amps. So if both appliances were used on the same 15 amp circuit in the RV, the circuit breaker would trip. Another example would be determining the maximum wattage capacity for an RV with a 30 amp 120 volt electrical system. 30 amps times 120 volts equals 3600 watts. If you exceed the total 3600 watt capacity or the total 30 amp capacity, it is highly likely the 30 amp breaker in the RV or the 30 amp breaker at the campground pedestal would trip. You can go one step further by looking at the power distribution center in your RV. You will notice there are several different circuits identified by the individual circuit breakers. Let's take a 15 amp circuit for example. 15 amps times 120 volts equals 1800 watts. A 15 amp circuit that is used solely for electrical outlets in the RV is based on the premise that you will not use all of the outlets on that circuit at the same time or use appliances that will exceed the amperage rating. If, for example, you attempt to use a coffee pot and an induction cooktop at the same time, the 15 amp breaker in the power distribution box will probably trip. Here's why. The combined 16 amps times 120 volts equals 1920 watts, which exceeds the 1800 watt rating of a 15 amp circuit. For devices in the RV that require more amperage, you will notice larger size circuit breakers in the power distribution box. For example, the roof air conditioner is on a separate 20 amp circuit breaker. Let's say your roof air conditioner is drawing 13 amps, you start the microwave and it draws 10 amps, and you put some bread in the toaster drawing another 8 amps. In this situation you did not exceed any of the individual circuits in the RV, but you did exceed the campground's 30 amp service, resulting in the 30 amp circuit breaker tripping. This topic gets a little more complicated when you factor in things like GFCI circuits, the RV power converter that's used for 12 volt devices, and if there are any wiring related problems at the campground or in the RV. But if you understand and apply some of these basic formulas, you are well on your way to understanding RV living on 30 amps. Happy camping. You can watch the full uncut version of many of these stories along with other additional video stories and news on our website at rvingtoday.tv. 
This has been another fun production.